going here with study and questions and things that I want you to, um, all of us, I want us to um, keep searching the scriptures uh, and looking for things and asking questions of each other. You asking of me, me asking of you, you asking other people who are teaching. And I think that's what we should do. Don't you agree that we should be asking questions and searching and knowing that God will teach us all, that he's no respecter of person, that he'll teach anyone who asks. I mean, if you're his child, he will teach you. And I really, truly believe that. I know God is good. And I know he is his good and will and pleasure that we actually know the truth because uh, no, uh, no lie is of the truth. So here <clears throat> I'm going to this video that was done. This guy, this, this uh, guy's channel, Tovia Singer. You've seen me do things with him before. I'm kind of circling back on this. He says, will two thirds of Jews be killed? Uh, he says, Christians misinterpret a crucial, crucial passage. And, uh, you know, I think this is good. I think that, um, you know, I've noticed that certain people on the um, Internet, they, they like to cover other people like the, they like to cover people that they call Muslims. They like to cover all these different people, but they don't really do any videos or exposés on these guys who claim that they're Jews. And, I you know, I, I want you to also start to to ask these guys these questions. Why don't you ever do videos talking about these guys and how they're false teachers? You're you're always covering so-called Muslims and so-called other people. Why don't you cover these guys, too, since you. If they claim to have such a heart for these people, why don't they tell them what's going on and what's wrong with their teaching, right? Uh, so I think that should be done. Uh, there, there seems to be a little bit of a respect to person going on with that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and play this. I'm going to, so that I can have, um, let's see. I'm going to make sure that I have something. I want to take notes as this guy's teaching. So um, he's teaching this. I want to make sure that I can take notes. Yeah, What's wrong with this thing? Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so we're going to listen, and I'm going to take notes as we go. Then we're going to go back. Non-Jewish humanity, a question that uh, came to my mind I wanted to uh, call in to ask. So in, in a recent answer, Rabbi Singer, you mentioned that when Mashiach comes, that there's going to be two segments of society, two-thirds of a non-Jewish humanity, enemies of God, who will go to war and be cut off completely and a third part of non-Jews will be saved. So it kind of got me to wondering, and it makes me wonder and think if it could be those that have not found the truth of Judaism, like those of us who are, who are finding it, that might view the true Mashiach when he comes as what they would believe to be the Antichrist and would make up that two-thirds group that would be the enemies of God going to war with Mashiach. So can you help me understand this? Because I'm, I'm trying to reconcile that idea that their two-thirds would go to war as enemies of God with the idea that when the Mashiach comes, everyone is supposed to know the truth and everyone's supposed to recognize that he is the true Mashiach. Otherwise, if they don't, he isn't the real deal. So how do these two uh, things uh, become reconciled? Okay. He says, when Jesus returns, he says, uh, when uh, Jesus returns, Savior returns, everyone is supposed to know to know and identify him as the real deal he says otherwise he otherwise he is the anti christ anti savior right he's not about salvation so i i hope you caught what you're saying he says so when Jesus returns, there'll be two thirds who are going to be enemies who are going to be cut off because they're at war with the Savior, right? They're fighting the Savior. Then he says one third of non-Jews will be saved, right? Because he says when Jesus returns, everyone is supposed to know and identify him. They're supposed to see him as he is, right? As the real deal. Otherwise, he is the Antichrist. If you don't see him for who he is, then he's the Antichrist to you, right? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate all you do, and I appreciate uh, your answer. Thank you very much. That's a very, very thoughtful question. When the Messiah comes and when the temple will be built, the whole world will know the truth. We will no longer be in a world that is hidden. And that's Okay. Now we're going to go into the rabbi's response, the so-called rabbi. The rabbi, okay, let's just call this guy. Well, I'm a rabbi. Okay, let's just do this. Response. 
He says, um, when, uh, when the Savior returns, the temple will be rebuilt. Right? That's what he just said. You heard him. That's what he said. I'm not, guys, I'm not, I'm not making stuff up. Let's, let's go back because I don't make sure I get it. Very much. That's a very, very thoughtful question. When the Messiah comes and when the temple will be built, the whole, okay, temple will be built, okay. the whole world will know the truth. He says at this time, he says, the whole world will know, will know the truth. Got you. Great. We will no longer be in a world that is hidden. And that's where the... Listen, he said, listen, we, those who know the truth, will no, no longer be in a world that is hidden. No longer. The word Olam comes from now. He said the word Olam. See, he said something fancy, so he's got to be telling the truth because he said the word Olam, and I don't even know what Olam means. So, Olam to be hidden, rather the whole world will know the truth. The no Look at this, Isaiah eleven nine, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. My goodness gracious! All right, so we're gonna we're gonna put this in. We're gonna parenthetical Isaiah. 11 9 on that one okay it says it'll no longer be hidden okay knowledge of now i want you to notice this isaiah 11 9. so for the whole earth shall be full of the knowledge of the lord as the world covers the sea now there's so much in this guys he says uh i'm gonna go here i'm gonna go isaiah 11 9 you know um whole it says the earth shall be full of the knowledge of God as the waters cover cover the sea okay I, I just I, there's something so beautiful about that but we'll, we'll keep on going I won't stop God will cover the world as the water covers the sea however there are events that are the precursor to the coming of the Messiah. Of okay, okay, we gotta know what this is. Events that will unfold. See? See, we are listening. And we are precursor to return. I want to know what this is. And those events will be a, a nudge to people to repent. I Okay. The events will be nudge uh, 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 nudge to people to to repent okay so this same event okay let's keep on going believe that we are observing the series of events that trigger that ignite the coming of the messiah right now mm -hmm. as we speak during this time, of course, there are many who don't know about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm. and even worse, know him and reject him. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. He's saying there's many who know him and reject him. Well, that's interesting because how do you know him but then reject him at the same time? Right? He says, my sheep, I know them. But how do you know him and reject him at the same time? Heard of him, but turned their back against him. So they heard of him. They heard of him, him being the Messiah, and turned their backs against him. They reject him. Ain't that something else? Now he's going to, he's going to Zechariah. Zach, what? We have to dial back to the end of Zechariah. Almost all of the chapters 
that are at the end of this holy book are about non-Jews. It's strange, but they are. Because the Messianic age is very much about the non-Jews, those who are not the B'nai Israel, the children of Israel. See that? See that, guys? It's, it's, it's about the non-Jews, you know? Those who are not of Israel. That's what the book is about. So he's talking about, it's really about him returning, and it's about the non-Jews, you know? Okay, so what, what's he returning for? To, what's he? And they will enjoy the light of the children of Israel. Okay, all right, so the non-Jews, these are the Gentiles. And, and they will enjoy the light. The light. Light of the children of Israel. My goodness gracious. They won't turn their back against the Jewish people. Mm -mm. Rather, 10 of different languages will grab the shirt of a Jew and say, take us with you, for now we've heard that God is with you. And why are they going to come? They're going to say, look, he, now he just said the light, they, they will grass the sleeve they will touch the garment of a Jew and say because uh, God is with them right so they like take us take us with you please good sir okay you know that passage, the last passage of Zechariah 8, verse 23, about non-Jews, a light to the nations in the Messianic age. And through that... Okay, now here we go, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Isaiah 9. This is going to sum it all up, guys. This is summing it all up. Isaiah 49, 6. In essence, he say, the light to the nations is about salvation that reaches to the ends or end of the earth. Ain't that something? That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Let's listen to what they got to say. I'm going to let them play out a little bit more and then we're going to go to and study this. See what he says. Light, the nations will find their way to God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That term is unique to Isaiah. Isaiah 42, verse 6, and very famously, Isaiah 49, verse 6. However, there's a precursor to the coming of the Messiah, events that will unfold. And we're told about that in Zechariah and Ezekiel as well. Very famously, they're in other locations as well, but very famously, we're told that nations will go to war against Jerusalem. It's interesting that Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel, is really called Jerusalem in Messianic prophecy. These nations will fail. They will be destroyed. They're described in detail in these two books. As I said, those are not the only locations, but very famously, in Ezekiel 38 and 39, and Zechariah, just the last chapter, the whole end of it, really. Mm. And here we get to the two-thirds, because the war is going to be two parts, two nations, or two corporations of nations that will go to war against your slime, and they will be utterly destroyed. See Zechariah 12, Zechariah 8. It's really, as you can tell, it's pretty much everywhere. And now we're going to zoom in on Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8 and 9. It's almost like you zoom in on your computer or on Google Earth so you can go really tight. We are told there that there'll be two parts or two mouths. This is translated almost uniformly in Christian translations as two-thirds. Two-thirds will be struck down and perish. That's completely wrong 
completely wrong. Listen very carefully. I have a hunch that that's where the 666 comes from, because 666 would represent two-thirds as a decimal. But this is utterly wrong. The text says, V'hoya b'chol ha'aretz, no ma'ashem, that it'll be in the whole world. Pi shnayim ba yikarsu yikvo. It will be that, now the word there is pi I want to translate that literally. Two mouths, ikarsu, will be cut off, vigvo, and will be utterly destroyed. Now, you're going, what is this two mouths business? So it's all going to be good. I'm going to explain this to you. So we could translate that. It would be okay to say two parts. Hmm. There's a reason why Zachariah is using the words two mouths, and if you know your Deuteronomy, and I'm really talking about the end of Deuteronomy uh, 17, 18, all, all those chapters that deal in the areas of laws, torts, uh, courts, witnesses, pishnayim, you could condemn someone according to the mouth of two. So it's using... Okay. So you can, can do what? You can do what? The two parts or two mouths... is used to condemn in court, All right? Don't say law. Let's go ahead. At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses, shall he that is worthy of death be put to death, but at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. Listen, here's the part we gotta say. At the mouth of two or three, but then he says, but at the mouth of one, he shall not be put to death. Now, this is something I'm going to put. But it says at, we're going to put this, at the mouth of one witness, it says he shall not be put to death. All right. Let's keep on going. Using the testimonial language. That means those who testify against Klal Yisrael. Isaiah mocks these nations. He's saying if you if you have words against Israel, he says these these nations that go against Israel, they will be mocked themselves. In Isaiah 43, see verse 7, 8, 9, leading up to the famous, you are my witnesses. Oh, that's so interesting. So he's talking about, you know, see, now he goes into saying that, um, let me go here. Let's see. Nations that go against Israel godly Israel Um, are going against God's witnesses. Okay? And will be destroyed. Destroyed. Thing. So if you back up on Isaiah 43, but not verse 10. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, my servant. That's verse 10, but what precedes it? What introduces it? Isaiah mocks the Gentile nations. That means those who are not. See that? He mocks the what? The Gentile nations. Now, what we mentioned Gentiles in here, guys. He talks about non-Jews will be saved. Non-Jews are Gentile Gentiles. There we go. Uh, devoted to Hashem. And he says, let the nations come forth and give their testimony. Let them please tell us about the former things. It's very, very sarcastic language. Isaiah is conveying. Listen to what he's saying. Let all the nations gather together and let the people assemble. Who among them can declare this and announce to us former things? Right? Where was thou when I created? Let them bring their witnesses. Let them bring their 
witnesses. Okay? That they may be what? Justified. And let them hear and say, it is truth. Do you guys understand what this man is talking about? Are you, are you starting to get it? I'm just going to talk it through, but we can go through and look at the lessons, right? It says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. It says great is the mystery of God and as God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, priest of the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. So it's letting you know that in Adam all die. So let's talk about the first man, Adam made a living soul, made of the earth earthy. The last Adam made a what? Quickening spirit. It says in Adam all die and Christ are all made alive. So he's basically told Adam, he said, the day that thou eat of it, thou shalt surely die. So Adam didn't have the spirit of life. Adam has the spirit of what? Death. And since Adam had the spirit of death and the spirit of lies, and he followed after Eve, who followed after the serpent, he says, you followed after her in the transgression. So he says, you got to be born again, thrust out of the garden, right? So these guys don't have life. So he's saying now the way that you get back, the way that you get back to the garden is that you got to be what? Regenerated. Because now that you've sinned and corrupted yourself in the earth and all those things in it, your seed is corrupt. And so now Eve, who's the bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone, she says you and Eve who believe the lie now have a spirit of darkness. And because you both have a spirit of darkness, you don't know the truth. And so Jesus, God, who's the what? The way, the truth, the life comes to them in the likeness of what? Sinful flesh, because no man can see God and live. So you have to see him by faith. And that's why the words are preached, right? It says preach the word in season and out of season, right? It says you got to be born again of incorruptible seed by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. But the problem is God for Adam and Eve is like God knowing beforehand that they would do what they were going to do. He says, look, now I'm going to make you quote unquote who are in this world out of what the dust of the earth. You guys are temporal. You guys are temporal beings. You guys are temporal beings. And so he's now he's saying, like, you're going to have to believe the truth. So I'm going to come to you in the likeness of sinful flesh. Because after they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it says he that knoweth to do good and doeth not to him. It is a sin. Well, when they ate, they had the knowledge, right? They thought their eyes were open, but yet they became blind because now that they could see they did not. They no longer had what faith. And so they saw themselves as what? naked who told you you were naked so it's since it's saying that they were naked they had the law and the law did what the law was to quote unquote their conscience bore witness against them and that's why they tried to do what hide themselves with the with the leaf with the, the fig leaf whatever that came from the tree and he talks about how now they had corrupted themselves and tried to cover themselves quote cover their selves because they did not have what they could see now they had the knowledge of good and evil. And so now because they believe the serpent, now God's saying, now you have to believe me. You have to believe me. You have to have faith. Right. Instead of looking with your eyes, which the serpent said, your eyes will be open. Now you're going to have to see by faith because in actuality, now you're what you're blind. Now you sit in darkness. OK. And so them being formed from the dust of the earth, they were what made of flesh and blood. And they didn't have the spirit of life in them. Right. They were not of God. Right. The date of thou eat of it, thou shalt surely die. God is the God of the living and not the dead. So he's saying they became what enemies? Two thirds. Two thirds is really not two thirds. He's correct. Two thirds is talking about two parts. But in actuality, it's not just the two parts that was cut off. There's also the spirit that was in them. Right. So that's why it says, put in me a new spirit. It says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But he's saying, once you believe, right, I'll put a new spirit within you. One part. Right? One part. Okay. So the two parts, the enemies that are cut off, guess what it represents, guys? Well, Jesus has already told us flesh and blood. Flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. Now he talks about non-Jews will be saved. 
actually what that means is people will be converted, right? He says, unless you be converted and become as a little child, Nicodemus, you must be born again. He says, not of flesh nor of blood, because flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God, but of the spirit, right? The spirit. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth, and they that in the flesh can't please God. So he's saying one part will be saved. And that's where we have Stephen being a stone called upon God saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And the scriptures say, saving some with fear, pulling them from the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Saving some with fear, pulling them, from, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. So the one part is a spirit because God's called the what? Father of spirits. Okay. born of the spirit okay but he says when jesus returns everyone is supposed to know and identify him as the real deal now god it says is manifest in the flesh justified in the what spirit so we know god is a spirit but he manifests in the flesh because man can't see god so he comes in the likeness of sinful flesh so he's manifest in the flesh. What? Justified in the spirit. Seen of what? Angels. Why is he seen of angels? Because when you believe, you become a messenger of God. You become a what? A witness. But who's the witness that's in you? Oh, is God the work within you to do into will of his good pleasure? So it's God the work within you because God says, I will witness when the gospel is preached. It's God the work within you. Whether the person who hears today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart believes he says from faith to faith the just shall live by faith and his good will and pleasure is to give all who believe who see to reveal his son in me the son right and believe on him have everlasting life so when you believe the gospel god sees the heart and says i see that you have faith and that's one witness that's one witness abraham believed god and it was counted to him for what righteousness right that's why it says from faith to faith, one witness, the just shall live by faith. You don't know if a person believed. I don't know if a person believed. It's God the work thin us. We said, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, and then God says, preach the word in season, not a season, because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And if they believe the witness, which is God, the witness of truth in us, then he says, they believe me. And because they believe me, then they're what? They die to self. The enemy is destroyed, which is what? Death cut off. And he says, now they're a new creature created where? Created in Christ. Any man being Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. There's no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the what? Flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter nor see the kingdom of God. But after the what? Spirit. As many as are led by the what? Spirit of God. These are the sons of God. So these are people who've been regenerated of the good tree. No longer of quote unquote under the legal sin debt because he says look you guys had the knowledge of good and evil but you also know your conscience was bearing witness against you even before the law of moses hence they tried to hide themselves so he's saying now that you understand and see yourself for who you are as a sinner and you don't see god as being a man even though god is manifest in the flesh if I come to you, if someone comes to you, if anyone comes to you in the likeness of sinful flesh and they say to you, listen, is God that worketh in me to do unto will of his good pleasure? I'm speaking as an oracle of God. So hearken unto his voice and you're telling him today is the day of salvation. Today, the kingdom of God is at hand. And you're telling them about the gospel, how they need to believe, understanding that they're not going to be justified by the law. You're telling them about the sacrifice as you saw that Adam and Eve tried to hide themselves. And what happened? There was a what? An animal was what? Killed. And what was put on them? A skin. So that is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And he's saying, look, it's not a matter of the law, right? The legal sin that's been paid for you and for every man. It's a matter of faith. Because the legal sin that has been satisfied, the sin is what? John 16, 9. Just like you, quote, believe the serpent. Now you simply need to do what? Believe God and not think that you're going to be justified by the works of your flesh. Because they in the flesh can't please God. So hence, you must be born again.
So when it says you must be born again, he talks about how it needs to be cut off. He's saying flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. He's talking about the one part. He says they need to be what? Converted, regenerated of what? Incorruptible seed by the what? By the word of God. The words that I speak to, they are spirit and they are life. And once you believe it's God working in you to do unto will of his good pleasure. So that's why the scriptures say that is he that came by water and blood, not by water only, but by water and and blood and it's the spirit that beareth witness the spirit is truth and it says he that believeth on the son hath the witness in himself it's the spirit that beareth witness the spirit is truth let god be true in every man of what so we say since you seek a proof is god working in us to do into will of his good pleasure the spirit of truth god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth no truth is of the lie all men are liars that's why you must die to the old man and be born again a new creature created in christ so that's what the scriptures are explaining, right, guys? So when I come to you, you don't see it as the words of man. You listen for the voice and you say, oh, that's actually Christ. I hear the voice of the shepherd. And that's why Jesus says to the guy who claimed that he was a Jew, he says, you're not my sheep. He says, you believe not, you're not my sheep. He says, I know my sheep hear my voice. I know them. Why? He says, you didn't hear my voice. Faith comes by hearing. He says, you believe not because you're not my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. Faith comes by hearing. You don't believe the voice, right? And he says, I give unto them eternal life. He says, they follow me in what? In the regeneration, washing, renewing of the Holy Ghost. Regeneration means born again of incorruptible seed. He says, I give unto them eternal life. None shall what? Pluck. You're talking about the tree. Well, a good tree cannot bring forth good fruit. Neither can a bad tree bring forth I'm oh, sorry, a good tree cannot bring forth corrupt fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit, right? And you don't make seeds. He says, you sow into the flesh, you shall the flesh reap corruption. You sow into the spirit, you shall the spirit reap life everlasting. Each produces after his kind. God is called the father of spirits. It says his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God and the children of the flesh are on children of God. And he says, when the savior returns, he says the temple will build. He says, it's a temple made without hands. He says, we're a holy temple in the Lord. It talks about, we're a spiritual household, right? A spiritual household to offer up what? Uh, we're a spiritual house to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable unto God by what? By Jesus Christ. So we're not offering the works of our hands because we're built upon the foundation, which is Christ. We've all been made to drink of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock is what? Christ from faith to faith. We start in the spirit as many as are led by the spirit. We end in the spirit. It's from spirit to spirit. Right. And so that's what it's saying. And it says the whole world will know the truth because his kingdom is not of this world. And unless you're born again from Jerusalem above as free as the mother of us all, you cannot enter into the kingdom as Jesus told Nicodemus. So the whole world will know the truth. When you're born again, you're no longer of this world. Year of this world. I am not of this world. I am from above year from beneath year of this world. I am not of this world. Jerusalem above is free as the mother of us all. We're no longer in a bond servant in Egypt. We're no longer of Agar at Mount Sinai, seeking to be justified by the law. We understand that the law is a schoolmaster, a taskmaster to bring us unto Christ. Once we come to faith, we're no longer under a schoolmaster because we've been born. We've died to the old man. We, did, we forsook the house of Pharaoh, the flesh, the body, the temple made with hands. We died to that old man. We gave all things unto Caesar. We gave all things unto Pharaoh. You can have it all. Mother, father, sister, brother, wife, children denied ourselves, house, lands in the whole world for his name's sake, because we believe the gospel and we were born again into Jerusalem above as free as mother of us all. We're no longer children of the flesh, born into the heavenly Jerusalem, right? Love not the things in the world, right? Store not for yourselves treasure on earth with these break in and moth to corrupt, right? And he says, uh, we, those who know the truth, will no longer be in a world that is hidden, right? Jesus told what? Nicodemus, he said, marvel not that I say unto you, unless you be born again, you cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. He said, earth shall be full of the knowledge as the water covers the sea. He's talking about this world is what, though? Drowning in perdition. It's covered. This world is covered with the what? With lies. Out of the mouth of the dragon proceeded the, proceeded the what? a flood 
And that same flood that came from that dragon's mouth is the same flood that Eve swallowed and then gave to her husband, Adam, to swallow. And then now those lies have been passed on to men. So that's why men are what? Drowning in perdition, tossed about with every manner of wind or doctrine, foaming out their shame, foaming out their lies, right? From a pit, from the heart, because out of the heart, how heart the mouth speaketh. But then when God says, look, believe, 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 then they do what? They got fiery darts, right? And we have to put up our shield of faith. We have gainsayers, right? We wrestle not with flesh and blood. Our weapons aren't carnal. We have the sword, which is the word of God, right? To defend against the what? The adversary. But he said the precursor to the return, he said events will nudge people to repent, <laughs> Right? Well, the events as you look all around and I hope you can see the signs. I hope you can see the signs that men are working really hard for the treasures of this world, but yet they're going into the ground. I hope you can see the signs that as Solomon saw the sign that says vanity of vanities. He says he looked at all for all the things he labored under the sun. He saw was vanity and vexation of spirits. Right. He says he's talked about how all the works under the sun didn't profit him. And the scriptures say, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his what? His soul. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. That's why it tells you, seek the heavenly treasures that are eternal in the heavens, not the ones that you can't keep. Because your house is not on a good foundation. It's on sand. You're drowning in perdition. There's no flood insurance that's going to cover it. So you got to abandon that house. You got to abandon yourself. You got to leave everything behind. You got to be born again, a new creature in heaven of God. He says, many who know him will know and reject him. He's talking about people who know the knowledge, have the knowledge of the truth, but reject it. That's why he's saying the gospel is preached unto them as well as unto us, but it didn't profit them being not mixed with faith in them that heard it. So we who go out with God as our witness in us and we God's working, telling them to believe and they don't hear his voice. And they're saying, I don't believe what you're saying. Well, they're simply not his sheep. And he says they will reject and they'll just see it as the, the words of men. They'll reject it. Because of their own itching ears. So he says, you know, it's about the non-Jews, the Gentiles, and they will enjoy the light of the children of Israel. Well, he told us we're children of the light. But he says this is, world is a world full of darkness. He said the light came into the world and the darkness comprehended it not. Light had no communion. My kingdom is not of this world with darkness. Right? He says then they will grasp the sleeve. They will want to grasp the sleeve of a Jew because they'll say, well, God is with you. Well, it's God that worketh in us to do unto will of his good pleasure, his will and good pleasure. And his will is that all who see, right, to reveal his son in me, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, his son and believe have everlasting life. He says in Isaiah 49, 6, he says, light to the nations about salvation that reaches to the what end of the earth. When you believe you're no longer of this world and this world has been what crucified to you. You're born again. You're converted. This is why the scriptures say a Jew is not one who's one outwardly flesh and blood, but a Jew is one who's one inwardly and circumcision is by the heart. We are the circumcision, which worship God and spirit and rejoice in Christ and have no confidence from faith to faith to just shall live by faith in the flesh. We believe the witness, which is God, not the witness of flesh and blood men. We understand God is manifest in the flesh, but we know it's the spirit that bears witness. The spirit is truth. God is manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. It's the spirit that quickeneth that giveth life. And the spirit is life because of what? Righteousness. Right? And so because that we're found in him, Having not our own righteousness, we're clothed in his righteousness. And they'll say, take us with you. And we're like, but you tried to work the law. You're still naked before God. He sees you don't have faith. You're the ones who are trying to cast stones at the woman caught in adultery. You were judging after the flesh and God was just looking for faith. You're the ones who are trying to work and make good. You're the ones who says, I'm going to give back the silver and say I spilled innocent blood instead of just believing the gospel. You were self-righteous. You thought you could work your way into heaven. Oh, foolish generation. 
He says nations will be at war with New Jerusalem. And Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all. He said they will be destroyed. Two nations, two mouths, the two mouths, two parts is flesh and blood, right? Because it says it's the spirit that beareth witness, the spirit of truth, and God is the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And he says that two thirds will be cut off. Stephen, when he was thrown, called upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, saving someone fear, pulling him from the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Flesh and blood, two parts, cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. God's call the Father of spirits. And he says there's two mouths, he says, is used to condemn, right? Because men are going to accuse us because they're going to see us as children of the flesh because they're looking at our outward man. And as Paul said, if I do the things that I would not, it's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. But I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. So who can lay charge to God's elect? It's God that justifieth. It's the by the mouth of one witness a man shall not be put to death. He says, I give it to them eternal life. They shall never perish. So we're no longer of the flesh. He says, if I, Paul said, if I do the things that I would not, it's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwelt in me. Let me clarify. That is in my old man, the outward man, in my flesh, the man that's not hid in God, dwelleth no good thing. But he said, I delight after the law. He's talking about the light of life in Christ. Because there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I delight after the law of God, after my inward man. So that's why it's who can lay charge to God's elect. It's God that justifieth. It's God that just, I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. It's God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. You've been born again. You're a child of God, the father of spirits. You're not a child of the flesh who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The Lord is my shepherd. Right. He said by the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Believeth thou this? So nations that go against godly Israel, they sought a better country in heavenly. My kingdom is not of this world. Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all are going against God's witnesses. We have the witness in us is God that worketh in us. It's the spirit that bear witness. The spirit is truth. And he says, those that go against us will be destroyed. These are people who love the world. These are the gainsayers. These are people who don't believe the gospel. And God, this is a wonderful and beautiful. I mean, this is so beautiful. I mean, you think about 1 Timothy 3.16. 1 Timothy 3.16 sums up the whole scriptures. When I tell you this, people don't believe it. But I'm telling you, 1 Timothy 3.16 sums up the whole scriptures, guys. It tells you the whole kit and caboodle in 1 Timothy 3.16. The whole thing. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. But God is a spirit. He comes in the likeness of sinful flesh. But you got to see him as he is. Don't see him as a man. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. That's why it says he's justified in the spirit. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. No flesh will glory before him. Right? The spirit is life because of righteousness. Seen of angels, we're his messengers. Listen. Priests unto the Gentiles. He's, this guy just said it. He says the Gentiles. He said he's coming to say the Gentiles. So who's the true Jews then? We are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. A Jew is not one who is one outwardly and circumcision is not outward in the flesh. He comes in the likeness of sinful flesh. But a Jew is one who is one inwardly and circumcision is that by the heart you got to believe. Oh, you're not my sheep because you believe not. You believe not. You're not my sheep. My sheep hear my voice and faith cometh by hearing. So you didn't hear the voice of the shepherd because you're not my sheep. You don't recognize me. And guess what? I don't recognize you. But a Jew is one who is one inwardly and circumcision is that by the heart in the spirit. And you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be what? The spirit of God dwelleth in you. God is my witness. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, that must mean he's still in the flesh and he hasn't seen God because he didn't hear my voice. He didn't follow in the regeneration, so he's still a Gentile. The gospel is preached unto him. 
the Gentile, as well as unto us. But he was not converted, regenerated, born again, being not mixed with faith in him that heard it. Because of that, he cannot inherit my kingdom, Nicodemus, because flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. But Stephen heard it. But Marcus heard it. Oh, there's people who heard it. They believed the witness. They received the witness. They heard his voice and they were converted, born again, regenerated. And I give unto them eternal life. So they were born from Jerusalem above as free as mother of us all. And they're here now in this world as strangers, as children of the light, letting their light shine before men that they may glorify their father, our father, which is in heaven. And so we have the what? The bread of life, the living water in us. And we're saying today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. The kingdom of God is at hand. We're preaching the gospel of the kingdom. But see, they don't want to believe if we said, well, guess what, Nicodemus? Since you refuse to be born again, I guess you're just going to just stay here in your kingdom. Right? You're already conquered. Just stay here in your kingdom. But as for Stephen, he called upon God because he says, I can call upon my father. Stephen, when he was stone called upon God, said, Lord Jesus, receive my what? Receive my spirit. I will bring a what? A third part to the fire. This is so beautiful. This is so amazing. This is so wonderful. God is so miraculous. But, you know, there's many who just want to see. See, God is no respect of person because he tells everybody to believe. But then he says, for those who believe, you're my sheep. It's not that the other people couldn't have been converted and born again and became a sheep of God. It's just that they refuse to believe. And so they remain of this world in this world because they love this world unto their death. Right. Men love darkness. All right. So I'm going to let it go at that, guys. Like I said, God is a spirit. See, there's one God. His name is Jesus and one mediator between God and man. That's the man. Christ Jesus made of Mary, made of the flesh and made of blood, made from the earth, right? descended from Adam, the first Adam. But see, God is a spirit and God was never a man. God comes in the likeness of man. Right. Manifest in the flesh. Right. And he's saying that that mediator between God and man, who was friends to the world, the man Jesus was friends to the world. He died for our sins. He was buried. He paid the legal sin debt with his blood so that we could believe by grace through faith and wouldn't have to, quote, quote, be stoned to death. And so he's saying now that the, that the legal sin debt has been paid. Guess what? You're free to just believe the gospel by grace through faith. But then there's some people who said, nah, I think I can keep the law. And I don't think what I did was worthy of death. So they try to lower the standard of God and they deny the blood sacrifice that was paid on their behalf. And God says, you better believe because if you don't understand what that legal sin debt did and And how you could not meet that because you did not keep the law, that you've offended the law and that you're not going to be justified by the law. That if you don't believe that or understand that what the cross is about, you won't understand that that's something you never could have met. And you will understand why that was necessary and that that is a schoolmaster so that you can understand that you need to be saved by grace through faith. If I read this law to you and tell you the standard of God and you say, I think I can keep it, then you're a liar and you're calling yourself righteous. You're saying that you're you're the you're saying you're as righteous as God. You're saying you're 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 equal to God is what you're saying. So you're saying I, I despise you're saying you despise the mercy and despise the grace of God. So you you continue in unbelief. And God says, my grace is sufficient, but I'm not you're saved by grace through faith, but I'm not giving my grace to people who don't believe. So that's what it says. Shall we sin so that grace will abound? It's talking about people who don't believe. And God's saying, well, I can't give you the grace if you don't believe. My grace abounds. I'm I'm rich in mercy. But you got to have faith for me to give it. The dispensation of grace will be given to you if you simply believe. But if you want to continue in unbelief, then I can't give you the grace. I didn't. It's not that I didn't have the grace. It's just that you're a faithless generation. You put your trust in men. Okay. 
So I want to uh, say, like, we're believing that, you know, God gives us the free gift of eternal life, understanding that the man, the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. God, who's the spirit, quickened that mortal body, raised it from the dead, just like he quickened my mortal body. And now it's God working in me. Right. He's manifesting the flesh. But it's, it's the spirit that bears witness. The spirit is truth. And he's speaking in me to tell you the truth and telling you the same thing that was told to me. Look, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. All right. To the king, eternally mortal and invisible, the only wise God, my savior, Jesus. Amen.